Athikana, by H.P. Lovecraft. It was in the pale garden of Zaius, the mist-shrouded gardens of Zaius, where blossoms the white nephilot, the redolent herald of midnight. There slumber the still lakes of crystal, and streamlets that flow without murmuring, smooth streamlets from caverns of Cathos, where brood the calm spirits of twilight, and over the lakes and the streamlets are bridges of pure alabaster, white bridges all cunningly carven with figures of fairies and demons. Here glimmer strange suns and strange planets, and strange is the crescent Banapis that sets yon the ivy-grown ramparts where thickens the dust of the evening. Here fall the white vapours of Yabon, and here in the swirl of vapours I saw the divine Nathikana, the garlanded white Nathikana, the slender black-haired Nathikana, the slow-eyed red-lipped Nathikana, the silver-voiced sweet Nathikana, the pale-robed beloved Nathikana. And ever was she my beloved, from ages when time was unfashioned, from days when the stars were not fashioned, nor anything fashioned but Yabon. And here dwelt we ever and ever, the innocent children of Zeis, at peace in the paths and the arbors, white crowned with the blessed Nephilot. How oft would we float in the twilight o'er flower-covered pastures and hillsides, all white with the lowly Astolton, the lowly yet lovely Astolton, and dream in a world made of dreaming, the dreams that are fairer than Aden, bright dreams that are truer than reason. So dreamed and so loved we through ages, till came the cursed season of Zanin, the demon-damned season of Zanin, when red shone the suns and the planets, and red gleamed the crescent, Banapis, and red fell the vapours of Yabon. Then reddened the blossoms and streamlets and lakes that lay under the bridges, and even the calm alabaster glowed pink with uncanny reflections, till all the carved fairies and diamonds leered redly from the backgrounds of shadow. Now reddened my vision, and madly I strove to peer through the dense curtain and glimpse the divine Nathikana, the pure, ever pale Nathikana, the loved, the unchanged Nathikana. But vortex on vortex of madness beclouded my laboring vision, my damnable reddening vision that built a new world for my seeing, a new world of redness and darkness, a horrible coma called living. So now in this coma called living, I view the bright phantoms of beauty, the false, hollow phantoms of beauty that cloak all the evils of Zan, and I view them with infinite longing. So like do they seem to my loved one, so shapely and fair like my loved one, yet foul from their eyes shines their evil, their cruel and pitiless evil, more evil than Thaphron and Latgos, twice ill for its gorgeous concealment. And only in slumbers of midnight appears the lost maid Nathikana, the pallid, the pure Nathikana, who fades at the glance of the dreamer. Again and again do I seek her, I woo with deep draughts of Plathotis, Deep draughts brewed in wine of Astarte, and strengthened with tears of long weeping. I yearn for the gardens of Zeus, the lovely lost garden of Zeus, where blossoms the white Nephilot, the redolent herald of midnight, the last potent draught I am brewing, a draught that the demons delight in, a draught that will banish the redness, the horrible coma called living. Soon, soon, if I fail not in brewing, the redness and madness will vanish, and deep in the worm-peopled darkness will rot the base chains that have bound me. Once more shall the gardens of Zeus dawn white on my long-tortured vision, and there midst the vapours of Yabon will stand the divine Nathikana, the deathless restored Nathikana, whose like is not met with in living,